In a world filled with busy schedules and endless distractions, taking charge of your health has never been more crucial. Welcome to a journey of empowerment, education, and well-being with Health Check with Dr. Noristani. Hello, and welcome to Health Check. I'm Dr. Noristani, and I'm excited to have you join us today for an insightful journey into a phase of life that every woman will experience, menopause. That is a topic that affects countless women around the world, yet it's often wrapped in mystery and misconceptions. Our goal today is to shed light on this natural transition and provide you uh, with valuable information that can empower and support you. In the United States, an estimate of 6,000 women reaches menopause every single day. That is more than 2 million every year. What is really staggering is 73% of women don't treat their menopause symptoms. Today, our special guest is a world-renowned gynecologist, Dr. Amir Marshi, aka Vagina Whisperer. Dr. Amir is a board-certified cosmetic gynecologist, pelvic pain specialist, a licensed practitioner in multiple estates. He's also the founder of Suri, the first sexual wellness brand that is created by a physician. Also, he is a pioneer in the field of women's sexual wellness. Menopause is the time that marks the end of your menstrual cycle. It is diagnosed after you have gone for 12 months without a period. Menopause can happen in your 40s or 50s but the average age in the United States is about 51. Menopause is a natural biological process, but the physical symptoms such as hot flashes and emotional symptoms uh, of uh, menopause may disrupt multiple things, including your sleep, lowers your energy level, or affect your emotional health. But there is the good news. There's a lot we can do to make this transition smoother and more comfortable. From adopting a balanced diet to staying physically active and practicing stress reduction techniques. We'll be diving into these aspects, sharing expert advice and practical tips to help you embrace menopause with vitality and energy. Al Simon, I'm 91. I created Balance 7 when I was 70. I started having problems with my body, arthritis, diabetes, and other problems. I was told this was normal for my age. For the next five years, I researched and developed a product that would bring my body into balance. When I was 75, I started drinking Balance 7. My doctors were so impressed to see how well I was doing. Now the doctor is using Balance 7 on his patients. Balance 7 is a small price to pay to bring your body back to health. Go to Balance 7, the number 7.com and change your life for the better. For $10 off and free shipping, use the code word L. Welcome back. We're going to dive into um, the topic, the important topic of uh, menopause. And thank you once again, uh, Dr. Amir, for being here. Um, I, I should have said Dr. Mirashi. Uh, thank you so much. I know how busy you are and working in, uh, in New York must be crazy. Uh, so I want to start. Uh, the question uh, about uh, menopause. How does menopause impact a woman's hormonal balance and overall health? Well, thank you, Dr. Nuristani, for having me here. It's such an honor to be with you. And uh, doesn't matter how busy I am, I would love to make time for this because, you know, in our practice, it's everything is really about empowering women. And that has been my goal. Uh, you know, menopause, as we know, is like pause or stop of menses. And, uh, okay, you don't get your periods, but I tell people don't have the wrong impression of it. Because a lot of people say, oh, so I had one of my cousins, you know, called me, you know, in my culture, everybody's a cousin, like a third cousin <laughs> called me from another country. And he's like, oh, you know what? They said my hormones are not balanced anymore. I'm going into menopause. What's going to happen to me? I feel like I'm going to die. I'm depressed. That is not really the truth. You know, it's completely just a different stage. And many things actually get 
better as you are going into menopause. You know, for men, it really exists too. I mean, it's the truth that they say, oh, the man can, you know, fertilize uh, someone even when they are 70. But as you know, and I know, even 70% of men by age of 70, they have erectile dysfunction and there are lots of problems in the sperm. So it's just the process of aging. Same thing that happens in my face and your face. You know, we start like a nice plum. Exactly. We end up becoming like a prune. So I didn't have these lines. It used to be like this. Same thing happens really with the entire physiology. And the most important thing is to do the preventative measures, to make sure you keep your body strong and to make sure this doesn't, and this is the most important I tell all my patients, this doesn't affect your psyche. You just got to understand that, okay, so things are a little different, but a lot of people actually love the fact not to get their periods. I have patients who are 25 years old and they're like, put me on birth control forever because I hate (laughs) getting my periods. <laughs> so I, I, I think I mentioned that. I got that. I mean, I got so many patients. Yes, it is. Uh, it is a hassle, nonetheless, and going through it every single month. So I, I could imagine how many patients you you get and how many requests you get for that. Especially, you know, these days because people learn more about sexuality. They see how uh, you know we are more open. Back in the day, sex was such a taboo. But now we are talking about the benefits of it, the benefits of an orgasm, which is very important. So a lot of younger patients say, oh, I don't want to not be able to have sex for like five, six days during the month. So menopause, as some of my patients tell me, some of my older patients, is actually a blessing. And a lot of, I have patients who are in their 60s and 70s, and they have a better sex life than, you know, my 20 and 30 years old. So that's number one. So Menopause is not a pause. I think it's is a start to a play. So start playing more. But uh, there are, of course, changes that happens. And I guess that's the question that you asked. Because we have lack of estrogen, uh, of course, the bone density comes down. We know it affects the bone, but you can be on top of it whether you are doing hormone replacement therapy, which we can talk about it, or you take your calcium, you make sure you supplement with vitamin D. That's something that can easily be prevented. There are effects on the brain. You know, depression can be one of the effects that happens, especially when it just starts. But it can easily be fought with, again, could be with hormone therapy, which I tell you who can and who can't do that. But in reality is that if you are in charge of your brain and you talk to other people and you listen to enough podcasts and program, nice programs like yours, you got to know that this is just a little obstacle, just like anything else in life that can actually make you uh, a stronger person. Uh, you know, and more of a woman, actually, you don't need to get your periods every month. But a lot of people that affects them, it's usually a short term effect, but that's depression. It's the other one. Of course, it could have effects on heart health, you know, those um, more than me. But in reality, there aren't major effects. Since you asked me, I usually don't even discuss these with my patients Mm -hmm. unless they bring them up. They're like, oh, I feel a little depressed. And I tell them what I think needs to be done. Well, I, I, you know what? I have to agree with you 100%. Even as a physician, internal medicine, critical care, you know, I don't really see a lot of patients with menopause or going through that process. Uh, I do have some practices and outpatients, so I see very, I mean, very few and rare uh, part of that. Uh, so it is one of those, uh, a, one of those areas that it's a taboo to talk about it. When especially when it comes to sexual changes uh, that women experience during a menopause and how everything is affected, and, and including their intimate relation uh, relationship. So when we come back, we'll take a quick break. Uh, We're going to discuss further the sexual health and the uh, hormonal effect uh, that menopause has on uh, women. We'll be right back. 
I suffer from um, stomach problems due to a lot of medication. I also suffer from depression. And since taking Balance 7 for the, for the past four and a half years, I see major improvements in both these areas. Thanks, Al, for creating Balance 7. Uh, welcome back. Um, so, Doc, according to John Hopkins studies, more than 33% of women in premenopause or who are in postmenopausal report having sexual difficulties from lack of interest in sex and sex uh, to trouble having an orgasm. Can right. you explain to us the biomechanics of uh, intercourse and the pathology or physiology of orgasm? Of course. So uh, one thing is that, you know, we focus and we zero in on the menopause, but in reality is that orgasm, as we all know, is very different process in women than it is in men. You have a lot of younger women who don't have any issues with menopause. They have good hormone levels, everything. They get their periods, but they still have problems with getting an orgasm. You know, a lot of these women tell me, I don't get orgasms with vaginal intercourse, or I, sh I can only masturbate to get an orgasm. So for women, it's very, very different because a lot of orgasm, over 90% of it, for women it really happen in the brain, they need to really be in the mood. They need to feel the connection. It's completely different than men that, uh, you know, a lot less of that is in the brain. A lot of it is physical for men. So that's one reason that many women, they don't really get orgasms with intercourse. And some women say, oh, up to like 80, 90% of times, they don't even feel you know, that orgasm feeling. So it's not really about the menopause. It, uh, it is just we are different genders, but you can do things to fix that, of course. And I'm going to go through biomechanics because this is something that nobody talks about it. And unfortunately, they didn't teach me in medical school. We all had to start teaching ourselves about this. So when I went to medical school, uh, this is anatomy of clitoris. They told me this is the clitoris, just this little bump that you see at the end. And uh, <clears throat> so the reason we don't talk about it, this is the only part that they told us is clitoris and nobody really dissected it to show us what's happening underneath. Why, Dr. Nuristani? As you know, this area is called the pudendal area, correct? What does it mean in Latin? the area to be ashamed of. So that is the biggest problem. There was so much shame around it. So nobody really spoke about it. And now we know a lot more. So when we started dissecting the clitoris, we realized that this is the clitoris and then you have the bulb. It's exactly like the anatomy of penis, but it's sitting inside. So this is the only part that you see, which is the glands of the clitoris. Now, I'm going to show you something that it would put it in perspective. What happens with the aging? So this is the clitoris. This is the entrance of the vagina, let's say. Uh, this is a hollow tube. So clitoris is sitting right on top of here, right? So this is the part that you see from outside. What happens, and I show this on every interview that I go, and people say, oh, we never knew about this. Normally, the vaginal canal has a downward angle. So it's not flat, it's downwards. Why is that? Because the sensitive part of the vagina is the front wall, which is covering all those nerves that are sitting on the front wall. And it's basically a part of the clitoris. Now, when we're having intercourse with a normal angle, you are really hitting the front wall of the vagina and stimulating all those nerves. What happens as we age? Just like the angles on my face, I lost all the collagen and everything, and this used to be like this. Same thing happens. This downward angle becomes flat. Now what's going to happen? You were like this, now you become like this. Now the penis goes in, and it does not really stimulate the front wall of the vagina. The force goes all around. Now, 
if somebody has a really, really, really large penis, maybe they can do this stimulation. But women, as they age and they lose this angle, they don't enjoy sex as much because they don't get the stimulation around that area, around the front wall of the vagina. And what happens? You don't enjoy it. It's just like a restaurant. You go there and you don't like the food. You don't want to go back to that restaurant. And this is exactly what happens to them. They have intercourse with their partner once and they're, oh, you know what, I do it for him, but I don't enjoy it anymore. So th that is what happens with aging. Uh, Darka, we're going to take a quick break. And, and then when we come back, we'll wrap it up. Uh, uh, great information. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Did you know fatigue and energy levels are directly related to too much acid? Restore your vitality with Balance 7. Visit Balance7.com or call 1-800-793-9039 to embark on a healthier lifestyle. Hi, I'm Dr. Ahmad Norastani, an internal medicine physician who has been taking care of thousands of patients in intensive care units. A little over two years ago, I was introduced to a product called Balance 7. I was amazed how quickly it helped my patients. The results have been wonderful. I now recommend Balance 7 to all my patients. Order Balance 7 so you can experience great results for yourself. Go to balance7.com and improve your quality of life. Welcome back. So almost 50% of women over age of 50 have some degree of pelvic floor dysfunction. Uh, what strategies or treatments are available to address the hormonal and sexual changes, uh, but also the changes that occurs to the a woman's pelvic floor uh, during menopause? I think we, we just touched base a little bit about it, um, and uh, I, I think it's important to get a little more detail for our audience because I'm learning. As a physician, I haven't been trained in this, and I haven't really touched the surface of that. Uh, and then lastly, I wanted to ask you a question about your amazing project that you have done about Saray um, and a clitogram. Uh, uh, if you could talk to our audience about it, what it is and how they could get their hands on and also most importantly, the education they receive and where they could find that kind of, um, uh, that kind of information whether to reach you or your uh, website or information is that's available because I think a lot of people would really appreciate that. Sure. Uh, well, thank you so much again for having me here. So what happens as we age, uh, pelvic floor, just like any other muscles, it gets weaker. Uh, with childbirth especially, you're putting a lot of toll on the pelvic floor. And with aging, same thing happens. So there are different ways to, of course, keep it strong. Kegel exercises are really important. You know, I tell my patients, if you can do them, unfortunately, people start doing it and then they forget. It's kind of like going to the gym. You know, I've been trying to get my six packs for the past 10 years. It doesn't <laughs> happen because <laughs> you can't be consistent. You got a but, whole pack, dog. That's good enough, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. But uh, so Kegels are really important. And then there are different ways you can fix these muscles. Of course, depending on the patient, if they have a lot of problems, there are surgical methods to correct the angle of the vagina. And I tell people it's not really about tightening the vagina. There are so many doctors out there like, oh, I tighten the vagina all the way to your cervix. That is wrong. You really want to fix the pelvic floor and you really want to work on the muscles and fix the angle. So, uh, and that helps with the bladder dysfunctions because a lot of people, as we get older, they cough and sneeze, stress urinary incontinence. They start losing urine. So, Look, again, coming back to this, the bladder is sitting right on top here. When this is flat, the angle of bladder, you know, the urethra is like flat like this. So you cough or sneeze, it's going to come right out. Uh, kind of like if you have a kettle that it has a flat nozzle. You bring this nozzle up, what's going to happen? it's not going to happen. It's going to bring your urethra a little bit higher too. So you're not going to have those issues. So angle is very important. And I tell people it's all about the angle. We do a lot of research, uh, especially, uh, you know, with clitogram, we look at clitoris under ultrasound guidance. Uh, so it's the first protocol that me and Dr. Lavi 
Uh, she's great. She works with us in Saray. Uh, we did this protocol together for Clitogram to see what really works and what doesn't work. So we look at clitoris, we look at its blood supply Doppler studies to see, let's say, if an enchantment gel or orgasm gel actually increases blood supply, which sex tool, because they are not toys, which one of them is really effective and it can really stimulate the clitoris from inside and from outside. And it's not bogus. So we do a lot of research on this. And of course, um, I came up with a line of sex tools, um, you know, with Dr. Lavi together, which uh, are very strong. And not only they are powerful, they actually are from like medical grade silicon, the angles are correct and they're anatomically correct. You know, for the past 28,000 years, they've been making tools that look like penises. After 28,000 years, this is the first tool that we made that looks like a clitoris. So people can actually show it to their partners and be like, oh, clitoris looks like this. And of course, it vibrates to stimulate the entire clitoris. But uh, I use clitogram in a lot of different ways. We use it to help victims of female genital mutilation. Uh, I, I take care of a lot of those patients. We find out what's left of clitoris, what's not left. Even with labioplasties, I always do a study with clitogram to make sure we are not getting uh, any structure that we shouldn't be. And it helps us help a lot of people. Of course, it's still in the beginning phases of it. So we keep doing, you know, uh, different things with it. But... Uh, you know, one of the research that I want to close it with, and actually Sexology uh, published it, is uh, that we showed with clitogram which intercourse position is the most satisfying for women. You know, so we actually did in different positions, we saw which one has the most amount of engorgement in the clitoris. And it was missionary uh, with a pillow underneath the buttocks. Because when you put the pillow underneath the buttocks, you are making the flat angle, you actually tilt it up so you can correct it. So that was really the most satisfying, uh, you know, position. Wow, thank you, uh, Dark. Uh, once again, wealth of information, things that we have in even as a position, I haven't heard some of that. I'm looking forward to your research and shedding more light into this topic, a taboo that people don't want to talk about it, but it's so important as millions and millions of women uh, suffer um, a yearly and, and, and that number continue to rise. So thank you so much for taking the time and being with us. We're going to talk a short break and we're going to come back. I was diagnosed with uh, incurable lung cancer, stage four, and given two years to live. I had one spot of cancer over here, about 50 cent size, and then a big one over here, and my lungs were filling up and I had to get drained every nine days, you know, within three months, three chemo treatments. I haven't had to be, be drained in two months now. This cancer is gone, and this one over here was about halfway, and it's got a different shape and smaller than what it was, so as far as I'm concerned, the Mountain 7 has done a wonderful job along with the chemo. My hair's growing back. The doctor at the hospital was amazed at how much of the cancer had shrunk so fast. And uh, that's when I told him I was taking the Mountain 7, and he was really surprised about it. He just told me, don't change anything I'm doing, because whatever it is, it's working. I got a good appetite. Cancer can't live in a, alkaline, a body with alkaline in it. So I just followed what Al said to do with it. I definitely recommend it to anybody, whether it's cancer, Alzheimer's, and heartburn. It's not just for cancer. I mean, you got any aches or ailments? That's what I'd suggest trying. Yeah, so if uh, anybody's going through chemo and having a bad time with uh, everything, and especially the side effects or something, you should give it a try, because it's definitely helped me. It's definitely a miracle cure for me. <laughs> Never good to hear that you only have a couple of years to go, but like I say, I had more on to mine, I know. And I'll keep going.
It's important to address any emotional or psychological barriers uh, that may affect your sexual well-being. Self-esteem, body image, and stress can all play a role. Seeking therapy or counseling can provide a safe space to address these concerns and rebuild confidence. As we conclude, let's recap some key takeaways that can help you or someone you care about embrace menopause with grace and confidence. Embrace change. Menopause is a transition and transitions bring growth. Approach this phase with an open heart and willingness to adopt. It's a chance to rediscover yourself. Seek support, whether it is through friends, family, or healthcare professionals. Don't hesitate to ask for support. Sharing your experiences and concerns can lighten the load and remind you that you are not alone. Prioritize self-care. Self-care isn't selfish. It is essential. Nourish your body with a balanced diet, stay active, Practice relaxation techniques and engage in activities that bring you joy. Communication matters. Open and honest conversation with your healthcare provider and your loved ones can foster understanding and a sense of community. Don't shy away from discussing your needs and concerns. Embrace intimacy. If you are navigating changes in sexual health, remember that intimacy is a multifaceted journey. Open communication, a positive mindset, and seeking professional guidance when needed can contribute to a satisfying and fulfilling intimate life. When to see a doctor? Keep up with regular visits with your doctor for preventative health care and any medical concerns. Continue getting these appointments during and after menopause. Preventative health care as you age may include recommended health screening tests such as colonoscopies, mammogram, lipid panels. Your physician might include other tests including thyroid panel as well as iron studies. Other exams include breast exam as well as gynecological exam or pelvic exam. And remember, always seek medical advice if you are having vaginal bleed after menopause. Until next episode, stay curious, stay empowered, and remember that every chapter of life brings its own unique beauty. Take care and be kind to yourself. Tune into Health Check with Dr. Noristani weekly to gain insights that can transform your health journey. Let's build a healthier, happier community together. Get ready to be informed, inspired, and tune in with your health. See you on the next episode of Health Check with Dr. Noristani. The opinions and statements made by guests on this show are their own. Noble Productions does not constitute an endorsement or validation of what is discussed.